Good morning, folks. It's a day of back-end struggles here and at NASA. We won't let you care by the end of the show, though. I'm on my second backup computer, which can't handle the wind maps without crashing. They will return eventually. NASA's websites couldn't handle anything yesterday. They've been down since mid-Sunday, including SDO. You're actually watching the second backup here of Proba 2 Swap. Nothing but the incoming active region to notice. Do expect NASA to fix SDO sites today, and we'll all get a good look at these sunspots. By the way, the new UV viewer from GOES is up as well over at NOAA's site. If you want to be useful, send them feedback that we need at least 12 hours on that viewer, not two and a half. Solar wind here. Look at the purple line. That's plasma speed, and it pretty much displays the entire coronal hole stream and our descent back out of it now. The marks of the KP index match, too, showing our descent out of the low-level geomagnetic storm we had early yesterday. If you didn't know... The Northeast got hit again, the central states got hit again, snow records continue to fall, but now Germany and Netherlands get into the mix, Netherlands snarled by their first proper snowstorm in about a decade. Western Australia hit by a once in a decade flood, some farmers on the periphery of it really aren't complaining about the rain, but the hard hit areas are completely inundated with the earth stained flow. We're going to ease into the science with Hubble's view of NGC 1792, furnace like core, Fresh blue giants painting the arms. Beautiful. Up next, we've got another link in the chain, so to speak. We are in the sometimes boring part of a subfield development where little influences and large patterns over time are discovered, characterized, confirmed, and analyzed. In this case, they are working towards a full comprehension of solar particle forcing on the atmosphere, piece by piece, so I suppose observers can have some patience. And speaking of patience... Now that WIMPs are dying as a dark matter candidate, Axions aren't the only ones who have been waiting for their chance in the spotlight. The third place candidate in cosmology has been the sterile neutrino, but here, like every other time anyone has ever searched for dark matter or its direct effects, ever, they found nothing. Speaking of finding nothing, if not finding oxygen or dust in a galaxy isn't a big clue you need better technology, I don't know what is. Rather than take the extreme distance of this galaxy as a sign they need an upgrade, they decide it must be a peculiar type of galaxy and actually believe the galaxy is missing much of the metals and other components that it really must have, provided it is in this universe. Up next, we have a very detailed look at magnetism in the thin galactic plane. It is a great bit of science to work up this great bit of detail, but they also confirm a feature discovered in 2017 that is now ripe for discussion. So folks, if we are taking the Parker Spiral Galactic Current Sheet approach to the mapping, we come up with this. It is flipped backwards from the solar system's north perspective in our galaxy, and let's say you wanted to spot the actual sheet that you were in or the next one coming. You can't look directly 90 degrees to the side of the galactic center. The Parker Spiral curves out to you. You'd be looking too far back. And if you'd look 45 degrees towards the core, you can see that now we've gone too far and are inside the spiral coming to the starting point. The answer is to look around 50 to 80 degrees to see the magnetic sector you are in and the next one approaching, and you'll need to see it as a sharp curve separating the north-south boundary and containing the magnetic reversal of the system. Over on the right side is almost 50 to 80 degrees, and again, if it's there, we need to see the diagonal of some sort. As we've mentioned many times, the full up and down of the diagonal goes way up and down out of the midplane, so we're not going to see the full curve, but the diagonal is there. This implies we are in the southern, negative magnetic sector, heading into the positive north. And the idea is that we have this happen every 12,000 years or so. It drives the solar outburst and Earth catastrophe cycle. The last one was about 12,000 years ago. We find today a characteristic diffusion pattern magnetic cycle to Earth, pulse modulated on cycles similar to known solar cycles, and while it's not as specific as we dream about, they estimate that the total diffusion time is 11 to 15,000 years. Hmm, yeah, I'd have to say they're right. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn more about the disaster cycle on our channel homepage playlist and at suspiciousobservers.org. We're not only due again, we're seeing all the signs it is ongoing. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. It's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.